Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hi! Hi! Welcome to the Port Charles 411, all about Luke's Club. We talked about this a little bit on Monday. It was tough to find information. It was tough to find information because nothing was tagged Luke's Club. No. You had to go back to all the storyline. And then you had to not let yourself get caught in watching all the rest of the storyline outside of Luke's Club. So I might have gotten <laughs> sucked into a rabbit hole at some point. Yeah, me too. But I did put on a couple Facebook groups. Well, we put on a couple Facebook groups asking for different memories. Did you have anyone? No. Me too. I had basically one. Oh, okay. I had one that said Jason performed a tracheotomy. Yes. Did you watch we'll that? About. Yes. Okay. Well. So we'll get into that because whenever you just YouTube looking for stuff like Luke's Club and stuff like that, nothing pops mm-hmm. up. Well, we now created a playlist for you called Luke's Blues Club. So problem solved. <laughs> and so nice I'm pretty sure that I actually got them in order because I added them as we went through. Oh, perfect. And watched them. So yay me. <laughs> Here's your gold star for the day. Thank you. We should sell Amanda gold stars. We should. I, I don't give them out very easily, though. No, you don't. No. I will I cherish it. That's right. So we went to generalhospitalfandom.com, and not a whole lot of information on there, just that originally Luke's Club was a strip club called Paradise Lounge, which we talked about Yep. when we talked about Sunny. When was that? A couple months ago. Mm-hmm. So we talked about the Paradise Lounge Strip Club, and the club was later shut down by Sean Donnelly in 1993 after Sonny had hired underaged women, one of whom was <gasps> Karen, your fave. Yep. Sonny also lived in an apartment above the club for a number of years with residents including Stone Cates and Brenda Barrett. Aw, yeah, I miss those times. They were so cute. A year later, Sonny and Luke came up with the idea to turn the former Paradise Lounge into a blues club. When Sonny's father, Mike Corbin, arrived into town, Luke hired him as Mater D. Now, this, I didn't like how, I didn't like how a lot of this was written because there was a lot of drama. That's when we met Mike. Yes. And that's why, remember, when I texted you the other day and was like, I'm so excited that we're doing this because something, mm-hmm. is that what you, yes. Once okay. I started watching it, I got exactly what you were saying. Now we're going to get the background on Mike and understand why Sonny struggled so much with that relationship. Yeah. But the thing is, is that he did not walk in and Sonny said, hey, this is my pops. Give him a job. Sonny and Mike did not have a good relationship. And Mike wormed his way in. Right. He worked there for a little while before Sonny was even aware that he was there. Yep. He asked for the job and suggested having mismatched dinnerware. And I guess they did wind up doing that. Mm -hmm. And he tamed Foster. So he basically had like a stare down with Foster and how cute was Lucky. Lucky was adorable. That stare down was scary. If that big dog was barking at me like that, I would not just sit there and be like, hey, buddy, it's okay. How are you? I would turn around and run the other way. I asked. I was like, how do they train animals like that? Right. Seriously, because, I mean, he was angry. He was a scary puppy. And I loved Lucky was asking if Annabelle was going to be having Foster's puppies. Mm -hmm. So that was a great rabbit hole to get stuck. Yeah. Yes. Him with Lila was adorable. Him with Lila and Edward over the entire thing. It was just hysterical. Yes. Lila told Reginald to drain the jacuzzi because she was afraid he was going to drown the puppies. Yeah. That's kind of messed up though because Edward was really angry. He was really angry. Like it was Lucky's fault. And they pointed out that he had yelled at them about Foster one and this was Foster two. Yes, exactly. So sorry that your dog really likes my dogs. I don't know what else to tell you. And I loved that Luke knew that Mike was totally BSing him because mm-hmm. when he left that day, he said to Lucky, he's a smooth operator. Oh, yeah. You know, and he knew like something was up. But then Mike comes back later and knocks Foster out with tainted meat. Was that Foster? I think it was. I don't think that was Foster. Okay, good. No, that wasn't Foster. Okay, good. Because he was just throwing meat in, and he's like, here, have this. But he said that it was just a temporary. Yes, you'll wake up with a little bit of a headache. Yeah. I don't think that was Foster. Okay. I don't know where he was, though. I thought he was breaking back into the club, and Foster was there. It doesn't say. No, I was going to look on the YouTube videos real quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That puppy was not Foster. Okay. I know it wasn't. That was like in the very beginning, right? 
Yeah. Like the first or second video? Mm-hmm. Okay. Working second one. It didn't, to me, it didn't look like it was foster. It looked like a puppy. But you're right. I don't know where else he would have been going. So I don't know either. I didn't really pay attention that would make to sense. the dog. Hmm. I was also watching on my computer for a lot of it. And sometimes it gets real because the it was a really dark scene. Yes. So it right. Everything is so I really don't dark. think that I was even able to really see. So that might be why. But I don't know where else he would have been. So I don't either. I'll say that and that's right one of the things is that, you know, the, the videos are in sequential order, but not necessarily completely. Right. So then the Blues Club wound up being firebombed the night that Luke was taking Laura there to show her everything. And Lucky was there. And I wrote something about the firebombing. Oh, no, I found I found the video where they the conversation that. Sonny had with, was it Cusack is who he had the conversation with? No, Frank Smith. Mm -hmm. Or was it Scully the firebombed? It just says that in February 1995, while Sonny, Brenda, Lucky, Spencer, Luke, and Laura celebrated the impending opening, Brenda was there? I didn't think Brenda or Sonny were there. I thought it was just Luke, Laura, and Lucky. No, Sonny was there because it wasn't Sonny who went in and got Foster. Yes. But Brenda, I didn't think Brenda was there. Neither did I. No, and it was Cusack that was trying to move in on Sonny's territory. So that's who firebombed it, and then later Cusack turned up dead. I mean, it happens. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes things just work out that way. Yes. I thought the scene of the fire was funny, though, whenever Laura's screaming at Lucky, you never go back into a fire for anything. But we all know that. He knew that when he was going to run back into the building. His puppy was in there. Yeah. By the age that, son- or that Lucky was, you know, you don't run back into fire into the burning first down instinct. Buildings. Exactly. So I mean, Laura screaming at him is not teaching him a lesson she hadn't already taught him. You don't watch This Is Us. I do. Okay. That's exactly how Jack died. Yes, exactly. exactly. So he needed Laura. It's like he saved the puppy. So, <laughs> no, because they said don't go back in. I know. And he did anyway. So I totally. Just like Lucky tried to go back in and Luke stopped him. And then I Sonny went in and saved I absolutely understand. Him. Yeah, exactly. No, I understand. I get her mom points. Just I feel like that was not the time to have the conversation. Later on at home, talking about the fire. Hey, remember, we don't go running into burning buildings. At that moment, he was upset about his puppy. Yeah. I wouldn't run in after a dog, but that's not a dog person. Something else, sure. So did you notice that Mac's back bad accent was still there? Yes. <laughs> and I thought of you. <laughs> Why, Mac? Why have we not lost this yet? And then I just had a bunch of notes on so many good clips with Ricky Martin and Jonathan Jackson, mm. Miguel, and Lucky. I love Ricky. Lucky saying that he's going to talk to Mrs. Quartermain about Foster being a good father. So cute. And oh, loved when, so because Lulu was a baby baby, mm-hmm. like she was still in that little infant carrier. And Laura's like, yeah, we're going to peace out and go over to Beecher's Corners. Yes, and I did not remember them talking about Beecher's Corners back then. And so she left. I mean, Lucky, like, really held his own. He was like, no, I am staying. I can go stay with Aunt Ruby. And he was trying to go somewhere by himself. Oh, that's when he was going to talk to Lila, wasn't it? Yes. And she was like, I am not going to interfere with Luke's decision about your safety. Love it. I could watch Aunt Ruby scenes for days. I love her. And the thing that upset me the most is that Luke really was just trying to start the club to support his family and, like, give Laura the normal life that Mm -hmm. she wanted. Stop being on the run. And I loved how he yelled at Sonny. No one can get away with... Jason doesn't yell at Sonny that way. Mm -mm. Luke is the only person that could get away with yelling at Sonny that way. Well, he said, our agreement is if your business starts interfering with mine, then Mm -hmm. I get to buy you out. Well, and then Scully was threatening Luke. Mm Mm-hmm. And wanted 10% of the profits just to protect him. And it's like, that's that's not how that works. No. But having Sonny live upstairs, she had to know it was going to be a bad idea. Well, and then Scully knew that Donnelly was watching Luke mm-hmm. and totally set him up. And Luke winds up shooting Sean Donnelly. Yes. Which is awful. I love Sean Donnelly. We need to I know you do. I really do. The more I watched it, the more I loved him. It was a, I really enjoyed I mean, there's a lot of videos to watch. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it because you can get a really good, it, it makes you understand why the nineties were so right. I didn't good. realize that it was open as long as it was. It felt to me that it was only two or three years, but so it was open 95 about? to 03. Yeah. Do you want to talk about opening night? Sure. Opening night was BB King. Yep. I still, I wish 
they had a club. I said this a couple weeks ago. I wish they had a club like that again to bring different acts in. Because that was really fun. Mm-hmm. And that was when Mary Mae Ward would appear there also. Yes. And she sang so beautifully. She did. I miss her. She was just great. And it was just great to watch. It, it was just great to watch the <laughs> 90s again. You know? We may be stuck in the 90s. Just a bit. So then the next big thing that happened after Baby King was Felicia went into labor it was at the club. Yes. Felicia gave birth to Georgie. And that whole thing was ridiculous also because she talked about it afterwards and said, I was having contractions all day and I just kept telling the baby, it's Braxton Hicks. You're not coming today. So I went out. Who does that? Yeah. But yeah. Um, okay. I was having back labor with my daughter and I actually had a doctor's appointment that day and nothing registered. And so I went about my day because I was like, okay, this is just extremely painful and uncomfortable. Yeah, she was born at 10.55 that night. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. You had night babies. That's weird. Was your son born at night, too? He was born at 3.02 in the afternoon. Still, you're, like, later. Mine are or early day. We get it done early day. I had natural... <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah, they, my... They decided when they were coming my out. So. first three were induced, and then Madeline came on her own. But Madeline and Megan, one was born at 10.30, and one was born at 10.35. Oh, so and then that was one at 12.21. And Emily waited until General Hospital was over. I think we've talked about this before. Very she nice. She came out at 4.08, so I was watching General Hospital as I was Good delivering. Good girl. Good girl. On a Friday. So she knew. Stay oh, in there. Because I got to get my Do you remember what episode it was? I don't. I have to look it up. That oh. would be so cute. You're so smart. I'll put that in our baby book. Here you go. This is <laughs> the episode, episode of General Hospital is watching. <laughs> Thanks for letting me watch all of it. I just really like that, that she... Waited until you were done. Yes. <laughs> yes, good girl. That's about the only time that she did I what I wanted her to do. <laughs> but okay. And you haven't been able to finish an episode since. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't you hate when you're listening to a great podcast and suddenly you're interrupted by an ad? I know. Thank goodness Stitcher lets us listen to our favorite podcasts like Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, My Favorite Murder, and many more ad-free for only $4.99 a month or $34.99 a year. Go to Stitcher.com slash premium to sign up today. Use promo code PEER54 for one month free on us. So anyway, Felicia had George there and that was adorable. But the conversation that was taking place while she was having Georgie is ridiculous. Lucy was jealous because she was stealing attention off everyone. And then Lucy said she had Serena in a cabin all alone with just Scott. And then Bobby turns around and says, oh, yeah, remember whenever I had BJ at the Brownstone all by myself? That's not a normal conversation. Get to the hospital. First of all, hold it. Why did they just looks like, okay, let's give them some privacy. Everyone back to their tables. Rounds. Drinks are on the house. Yes. I'm like, why can't you guys go to another room? I know there's a back room. You opened it up for poker. Or right, even why upstairs in Sunny's apartment. Exactly. Party at Sunny's house. <laughs> but instead, everyone's sitting at the tables, and you just hear in the background Felicia screaming. Yes. And I also didn't understand why it was Tony that was delivering because Alan was there. I don't know. Monica wasn't there, I don't think. But anyway, there was like a room full of doctors and nurses, and it was the brother-in-law. I don't want my brother-in-law down there seeing that. Thanks, anyway. I definitely understand that. Okay. That's your point. I mean, because <laughs> that was kind of my first point, but I think that Tony did say, like, this is going to be my niece or nephew. I want to. And yeah. Felicia didn't care. And Frisco wasn't there, so Kevin's holding her hand. I would have wanted That's Tony what Lucy was all where, mad about. Yes, I would have wanted Tony to be where Kevin was. Right. Because he's my brother-in-law. Sure, coach me through because your brother can't be here. But you don't need to be down there. And he's a doctor, so it's... Mm, nope. I know. I know. <laughs> nope. Don't. I don't care who you are. I was weird enough about going to my friend who's my dentist at first. Yeah. You know, but now I don't care. Uh, maybe when you're in the pain of labor, you don't care. You just, like, much. get out. Just do whoever. Whoever wants to take it out, take it out. But I would have swapped places. Well, so that whole, whole episode started with Mary May on stage and Luke said that she was back in business, and I did not go down the rabbit hole Good of girl. why. <laughs> Good girl. But, and I said, so I was so confused the first time we see Felicia, she looks and just says, now, to Tony, and drops to the floor, like, immediately. Yes. It, she scooched under the table is what she told Maxie when she was replaying it. And I loved when Luke told Lucky that 
it was better than any talk that they could have about the birds and the bees. And Lucky's like, but it's still cool. And then Felicia starts screaming and his eyes just get huge. Like, <laughs> maybe not. And he said, I already knew all that, Dad. Well, I'm assuming that he knew some of it since Lulu had just been born. Yeah, but not to that extent. Right. He probably wasn't in the room. But he wasn't freaked out by it. No. So that was... No, he was very calm and collected. But then, so <laughs> finally, Georgie's born. I did like that Tony whispered it to Felicia before saying it yes. to anyone else. That was cute. The mom needs to know first. That was adorable. Because yes. she didn't know what she was having. Right. And then Luke asked for permission to fill the whole room. So that was sweet. But then everyone clapped and is cheering. <laughs> and it's like, Good job. Yay. I, I just, <laughs> I love it. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, my God, poor Felicia. There was one time I went to my annual exam, and it was at a teaching. I was in college. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I went to the university. Yeah. Healthcare, you know. Like, so we're a school. Right. You know, and they have a really good medical program. So there's a lot of doctors down there. They're like, do you care if we have people come and observe? Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I don't care. (laughs) There's like 10 people in the room. But was it anyone that you knew? No. All right. See, I think that's okay. When I was having that, they said the same thing. Is it okay if we have students come in? And I was like, yeah, sure. I don't know what's supposed to be happening and neither do they, I guess. So we'll all learn this together. Yeah. And it didn't bother me. But if it would have been someone that I knew, oh, no, no, no. Right. Everyone comes walking and you're like, oh, no, you right back yeah. out. You Everyone are not going watch there. Except for that person. But at that point in time, all of the students would have been older than me. So it wouldn't have been anyone that I knew. So, yeah. So that was a lot of excitement. And Mary Mae then took the stage again and sang God bless the child, so which sweet. was beautiful. And all of that is on our YouTube playlist. And then in 1996, and this is when Jason Quartermain, because he had just come out of the coma, mm-hmm. flipped over the table in a rage and stormed out of the club where he met Sonny Corinthos, who gave him money for a ride home. And then he came back like the next day and tried to give him the money back or something like that. Right. And he's like, how did you know that I own the club? He's like, the way that you talk to everyone, <laughs> you know, duh. Because Sonny was a silent that. partner. Right. I quoted silent, silent partner. partner, but he was there all the time because he lived there and he's not really silent about anything. Yep. And then in April of 1996, Lois Cerullo, who is Brooklyn's mom, booked R&B group All for One for the Ward House benefit at Luke's. I loved All for One. First thing I wrote was flashback to middle school dances. <laughs> I can love you like that. Yep. Wait, I didn't know that they sang the song I Turn to You before Christina Aguilera. No, I didn't know that either. They sang it. So here's the thing. I think they were on General Hospital twice, but neither one of, so there's three clips on our playlist. One shows Luke had, first of all, you can tell it's definitely two different times because Luke's hair. Yes. I liked when his hair was shaved. I thought he looked more handsome than the crazy hair. But there's four stools on the table or on the stage and they come out, sit down and sing, I can love you like that. Mm -hmm. But then on the other one, they're standing and they start off with, I turn to you and then go into, I can love you like that. So I don't know. I think that the one where they were sitting is the one that's mentioned here okay. that All for One did. But I have no idea what the other one is because it's definitely still General Hospital. Like there's General Hospital hmm. is General Hospital. They were both at Luke's? Yeah. Huh. Well, Luke introduced them in both. I didn't know if I guess they I'm showed assuming. up at a nurse's ball or something or at the Haunted Star or something. You know what? That's a fair point. I don't know. But Luke introduced both of them. Huh. So I guess I was just assuming. So I think that the... One that I put in the playlist first is the one that's being referenced. Not like it's that big of a deal. Who doesn't want to hear a whole bunch of all for one? So yes. you can watch it twice. I had their cassette. How about you? Their cassette. I did not. I, I did have their cassette. I did not. It was on a, uh, you know how people make playlists for you? It was on one of the playlists that Perfect. I had, but a I did not tape? have their, yes, thank you. Cause I would have been 16 at that point. So I had boys singing that song to me. Thanks. <laughs> I was still in middle school. <laughs> I was doing the hands on the shoulder, three feet apart, sway <laughs> back and forth in a straight line. That's dancing. Yep. <laughs> we wish the kids dance like that these days. Okay. Yeah. And then later that year. Yeah. Are you going to cry? No. I know it makes you emotional. You can say it. Lily Corinthos was blown up in a car bomb. And we talked about that during the Sunny and Brent or Sunny. Yep. Because it's referenced as click, click, boom. 
Yes, because that was when Jax and Brenda were getting married, and right as their champagne glasses clicked, the car went boom. <sighs> Horrible. I wasn't as devastated by that as you were. I didn't love Lily. She was nice, but I wasn't in love with her. I just, maybe part of it's because she was pregnant. I, I liked her friendship with Miguel more than I liked her relationship with Sonny. I just thought that it was the first time that Sonny was kind of really starting to move, to turn around. Is how I felt. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I just wasn't a fan of Lily's as much as you are. Not that I wanted to see her blowing up or anything, but. Well, good. Yes. I'm not that evil. (laughs) 97's when what we started talking about in the beginning, the trait happened. Yes. 97, Nicholas Cassadine. I just lost my place. It's a dumb In 1997, Nicholas Cassadine became the victim of mob violence when he was shot in the throat outside of Luke's with a bullet intended for Jason Morgan. Jason then performed a tracheotomy and ultimately saved Nicholas's life. I'm very glad that Jason saved his life, but that just sounds like the worst place to be shot at ever. Yeah. I mean, mm hmm. They said it went clean through, and Jason did the thing with the pen perfectly, and everything was great. Also thought that was weird that it was Jason that performed that, because, again, Alan was there, and Monica came running up after, but still, obviously, she was somewhere close enough by. How many other doctors or nurses were in the thing? And then that reminded me how much I did not like Elizabeth's sister, because she annoyed me through that entire scene. Sarah. Sarah. And we talked about her in the fall. Yes, of 2019. I don't think I remembered why I didn't like her that much until seeing her in this scene. Because she was just all, Jason, shut up. Back up. They're doing something. You can't help. Knock it off. So Charlotte Bryant Gain, or Gan, sorry, commented in the Stone Cold and Jackal group Mm -hmm. that she loved it when Jason Morgan performed a tracheotomy with an ink pen, which he had learned as Jason Q. Right. And so I'm trying to Google the heck out of this. And I can't find it. But then in the notes on fandom, it straight up says <laughs> that Jason formed it, did it then. So then I was able to find the clip. And it's also on our playlist. But I said the same thing. I was like, why did he perform it with Alan watching? But then it occurred to me that maybe Alan saw him immediately responding. Like his gut instinct was to right. do this thing. And maybe Alan's response was he's there. Yes. You know, Jason Quartermain is still there. And Monica told him that it was a good, clean job. But it makes you wonder why they haven't played back on that since then. I haven't seen him He's do never... anything medical. Not that I want him to become a doctor, but even when the kids skin their knee, he's not overly, oh, here, let's do this, blah, blah, blah. And to my recollection, I don't think I've ever seen him go into Jason Quartermain mode. Right. You know, like even have, gosh, even after all this patient six and all this stuff, you know, he's still never, his gut instinct or whatever has never been Mm -hmm. something like that. So. Right. Exactly. I did. Brenda was losing her mind flipping out on him. Brenda always had a flair for the dramatic stuff. So the police came and arrested Jason because he was assault with a deadly weapon because he saved Nicholas's life. Yeah. By using his pocket knife to open up his throat to stick the pen in so that he could breathe. Right. Well, even Emily said, why are they talking to Jason? He saved his life. And he said that no one is coming after him and he doesn't lie. But obviously he was incorrect since that was who they were gunning for. Right. But he didn't know it. He wouldn't knowingly bring violence around all those people. Right. Whatever. But so he gets in the cop car and then like Brenda starts. Oh, it was just really good to see because they're such good friends, too. Yes. So for her to be totally, I mean, she was punching him. I miss Brenda. I don't know that we should be saying, yay, good job punching people. but No, I like watching the scene. When I say that I like something, sometimes it doesn't mean I agree with what they're doing. I enjoyed watching the scene. It was a good scene. I know. I'm with you. I totally agree. It was just funny the way you said that. It was so good to watch her hitting him. What? But it was. It was. And then Teresa Roundtree said Jason saving Robin from the car bomb, and I couldn't find that Mm -mm. clip. So I don't know what that was. I'm sorry. But if that was outside of Luke's club, yay. How many car bombs did we do? We should have looked that up. How many car bombs went off of Luke's? Yeah. I don't know. But then really the last thing that we see is in 1999, the country band Shadaisy performed at the club. Yep. And we just talked about that with the spouses swap, because that's who was performing whenever Ned and Chloe and Jackson and Alexis all went out. 
Yep. And that was good. I loved Shadaisy. That was good. But in 2018, Ava Jerome revealed that the club had burned down several years earlier and that the Jerome Gallery was built on the former site. And we knew that because at one point in time when Mike was disoriented, he went to the gallery. Yep. Thinking that it was going to be Luke's place. Yep. And then, like we saw on last week's Flashback Friday, they reopened it at the Metro Court Mm -hmm. to help Mike. So he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and to help him maybe get some memories. Yep. Back and everything. So I think they should have done it at Ava's gallery, though. Hmm. I think Ava would have let them for Mike, and that would have been nice. I can't remember at that time. I don't know if she was being a jerk then yet or not. I don't remember when the whole was Avery this, That's exactly what I was thinking. Like when did he after. kidnap, quote, kidnap Avery? Right. You know, cause it, she wouldn't have. Right. But of right, course, right. Carly's going to, it's her hotel, you yeah. know, so. No, it was very nice. And it was neat to see him slip right back into playing bartender and stuff. I was surprised that they didn't have cards though. Cause that was a big part of Luke's too. It was the was. back room poker room. Some of the good scenes, so there wasn't really any story about it, but I threw in some good episodes that I found little clips from. And it was Jax was waiting to meet Ms. Barrett. Ah. So it was just great to see them at the beginning. And, yeah, I don't know. It was neat because, again, it only felt to me like it was open for a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But to watch the different – because when you first saw Jason there – Was when Felicia, well, he may have been there beforehand, but when I paid attention was when Felicia was having Georgie and they were asking him questions about, shouldn't she be at the hospital? How is she doing this? And he said, no, actually they've kind of proven your body knows what to do. The baby knows what to do. Let it happen. The less intervention, the better. So he was still Jason Quartermain at that moment. And then just a few clips later, which was obviously years, but a few short clips later, he's Jason Morgan getting shot at. And saving people with his knowledge from being Jason Quartermain. Well, and there was one time that when he was Jason Jason Morgan, I guess he used to be the valet. I can't remember which episode this was. I thought I had written this down. Oh, it was for all for one. So Jason, I guess, was the valet. And Robin came to the concert. Oh. And she's like, did I just see what I thought I saw? And I forget who it was at the door said, yeah. And she's like, Edward Quartermain is parking cars? <laughs> But so apparently Jason had quit, but he was at the show. Maybe he got angry and quit. Yeah. In the beginning of it. I don't know. But yeah, and like seeing Luke, again, I didn't like him with that shaggy haircut, but I thought he looked cute for an older gentleman with the shaved head. So Yeah, but it was fun. This was our first episode that we did on a building, a place. Right. It was a little bit more difficult than I think I thought it would be, but I enjoyed it. It was great to watch all the clips of things that happened there and... I think it was just difficult not to get caught. It, like I watched Georgie being born and then it flipped to the hospital scene. And so I had to watch all that, even though it had nothing mm-hmm. to do with the club and seeing Mary May makes you want to go down that whole rabbit hole. Yeah. And that could take you all those years to catch up. And we'll so, talk about her too. Yes. But so I said, I was like the, the opening part. of the club really had a lot to do with Mike. Mm hmm. Because, Oh, well, and then talk about the speed. No, we didn't. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> That was how we learned. This he is was why we both do this in person, because we both looked at each other and were like, oh, wait. <laughs> yes. So Luke needs to do some accounting. Doesn't have software to do it. Stone says, why don't you ask Mac if you can borrow his for it, like, the Outback? Yeah. I almost called it whatever, floating rope. For the Outback, why don't you ask if you can borrow that computer program? So he asks Jason to go get it, and Jason can't. He asked somebody to go get it, and they were busy doing something. So Mike volunteers. He asked Stone to go get it, but he was like, he doesn't like me because he was messing around with Robin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'm pretty sure. Yes. That was mentioned a lot. Yes. Oh, that was a scene, too. That is a scene. We'll have to get there in a second. So Mike goes to the Outback to ask for the software, and as he's leaving, it just happens upon some speakers laying in the parking lot and decides that they must be for anyone to take and grabs them, brings them back to Luke and says, some lady was selling these because her teenager was too loud. And so I got them. You can buy them off me for 500 bucks. And Luke doesn't notice that the branding for the Eddie main band is on idle rich is on the side of it. So he says, Oh yeah, great deal. And then Sonny walks in and is like, what the, well, meanwhile, Eddie Main is <clears throat> playing over at the Outback, Outback, right? And he's an L&B artist, so mm-hmm. that's his artist. And so Lois is losing her mind. Like, I can't believe I was this dumb. 
And Sonny sends out his guys and is like, go get more speakers, better ones, blah, blah, blah. But then, yeah, he comes back and sees them and asks Luke, where'd you get those? And he's like, oh, the new valet, the new Mater, Mater D got them for us. Yeah. And then I think that's when Mike walked in and he was like, that's my dad. <laughs> but then Luke and Sonny did wind up sharing their their childhood stories, too. Right? That was good. Point. That was good. There really was. Back when the club was opening, I feel like there was more revolving around the club. Yes. And then, obviously, you know, these concert nights and everything. We'll have to look up what the Ward House benefit was. I actually didn't look for that. I didn't look for that. didn't either. occur to me. Mm-mm. I just looked up all for one. Right, because Ward House will get you down that rabbit hole. Yes. Well. And, again, we were trying to stay away from it. Yeah. But talking about... Sun, or about Stone and Robin, Mac needed to talk to Luke and needed a quiet place and couldn't do it, obviously, in the middle of the club. So they went up to Sunny's apartment, and Luke tried to cover at first. He was really trying. He opened mm-hmm. up the door, saw who was in in the room, shut the door, and turned around and was like, oh, no, we'll have to talk somewhere else. It is yep. occupied. Sorry. And Mac lost his mind and kicked open the door, and there was Stone and Robin getting ready to... Do some growing up stuff. Yeah. So. Good times. Yes. I, I just love the whole But this was. It was a lot of fun to yeah. do it. So. It doesn't make you want to go back and watch all of the old episodes, though. We're going to have time now. They should just replay the Robin and Stone. Because if they're going to do the exactly. nursery fall they for need the first to do couple what weeks. Led up to it. Exactly. Then we should go into how that all got started. Agreed. And that would be great. I agree. You totally listen to that. Agree. But yeah, that's all I got. That's all that I have, too. It was fun. I'm sure that we missed something. Oh, yeah. I can guarantee it. So if we did, and just let us know, and we'll look it up and see where we can go from there. Yep. So have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com.